All right, we're back with uh, EPS, and now we're into diluted earnings per share. And our first example is going to be with convertible bonds. And we're going to use this method that's used also for convertible preferred stock called the if converted method. All right, so what we're doing, we're not actually converting. We're just saying if these things had been converted, what would it have looked like? So in a sense, we're just following a gap a, a scenario. So to say what the risk would have been to existing shareholders. Boy, that did not work out. Thought I'd turn that ringer off. Sorry about that. Okay. So just going on with the if converted method. Um, let's see. So this is going to be similar to the problem we saw with basic EPS, 200,000 shares outstanding, blah, 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 uh, three for one split, net income 1.2 million, accumulated 300,000 dividends on cumulative, on cumulative, what in God's green earth is going on here with my phone? Okay, sorry. Um, on cumulative preferred stock. Now here's where it, the if converted method comes. In the current year, they issued a 600,009% convertible bond at par. And we're going to see all of these issued at par just to make that, that portion of the calculation easier. Okay. Um, we have a conversion ratio. Um, they also had outstanding from the beginning of the year 1 million of 8% convertible bonds with a conversion ratio of 40 to 1. Okay. So, before I just dive into all these numbers, let's just go to a, I have a whiteboard over here. Here we go. I just want to write some stuff on a whiteboard for you. So the if converted method when a conversion happens the investor gives up the bond, right? So if it's converted um, first uh, you have to make a couple assumptions is when So, first day of the year, or if issued during the year, on date of issuance. So, in the example, we have one that was outstanding at the beginning of the year, one that was issued on August 1st, so we'll have to adjust for that. Okay, so they make an assumption about the conversion date. All right. Then what we have to do is we have to calculate interest net of tax that would have been avoided so if it had been converted then the company wouldn't have paid interest and calculate the WAV shares WAV shares issued on conversion okay uh, check that the per share effect in fact decreases diluted EPS
we have, then we have to add the numerator and denominator that we calculated to basic EPS components. All right, that sounds like a lot, kind of is a lot, but let me just tell you first. So it would be something like this, and this is in the lecture note. The number of months outstanding during the current year over 12. And we're going to be dealing with all par, so I'll just say times the face value. Times the interest rate. Times 1 minus the tax rate because this uh, interest expense was deductible. Whoops. Repeat the M over 12 because it affects both the numerator and the not denominator. And we take the face value divided by a thousand to give us the number of bonds. We multiply that number times the conversion ratio. When you put these together, you'll have a per share effect. And uh, this must be less than less than basic EPS to be included. So going back to the example, maybe these numbers will make more sense. We have an 8% and a 9% bond. The 8% was outstanding all year, so I didn't need to do the month thing. But it's 8% times the par value. OK. And uh, so we're just calculating the numerator right here. This is the interest avoided. And everything right here is the tax benefit So um, that we would have lost. And in this next step, I make it the calculation a little easier which is the one I showed you. 8% times the face value times 1 minus the tax rate. And in this case, it's 48,000. All right, that's the numerator. The denominator is the conversion ratio of 40. 1 million over 1,000 is the number of bonds. So that's 40,000. And 48 over 40 is buck twenty, which is less than $1.41, so we'll call it anti-dilutive. Now let's look at the 9% bonds. These were issued in August. So it's August 1, September, October, November, December. And that's where the 5 comes from. Okay, because they were outstanding 5 months of the year. So you didn't pay interest for the whole year. You only paid interest for 5 months of it. The amount of annual interest is 9% times 600,000. So the amount of 5 twelfths times that is the amount of interest expense during the year. We take that times 1 minus the tax rate, and we get 13500 for the numerator. Again, we take 5 twelfths because these shares aren't outstanding the full year. 600000 divided by 1,000, that's 600. Shares issued times 50, which is the conversion ratio. It's 12500 So um, to test for any dilution, we take the numerator, we calculate it over the denominator, and we got 108, which is way less than basic EPS. So we say it's dilutive, as is bond, the 8% bond. Okay, now, putting it all together. I'm going to strip this out a little bit. Yep, yeah, sorry. I don't know if you're hearing the ding. If I press a little button on my pen, it dings in my ears. So if you look at it this way instead of in a line, this thing here is basic EPS, right? 
we did that before and that's you're always going to start with that for diluted and then what we're going to do is we're going to add the 48,000 we're going to add the 13,500 we're going to add the 40,000 and we're going to add the 12,500 put it all together you get a dollar 39 so this company would report basic EPS a dollar 41 and um, diluted EPS a dollar 39 that's a good place to break and we're going to do uh, the, the uh, treasury stock method for warrants next that's another part of diluted EPS so the next video We'll have the treasury stock method.